Hey, it's Bill Hart of the Mac with Paint Protection. We're standing in front of a Chevy 2500 HD. We're gonna go through our wash process here. So we're gonna show you from, from wheels and tires to the body. We're gonna show you exactly how to wash up this Chevy 2500 Silverado HD diesel. Let's go along. So I'm gonna start here at the back. We're gonna use Gion Wheel Cleaner. It has an iron uh, removing component in it, which will help get the rim super clean. So, and we're gonna let this dwell for, dwell means wait three to five minutes, potentially. And we're gonna use Gion, Gion Tire Cleaner. That obviously goes on the tires. First thing we're gonna use is our horse hair brush. Sports hair brush is really nice and soft. It's not gonna damage. I, I, I like to start at the bottom and go counterclockwise because I'm right-handed. Just come in here. I have some Gion foam in this bucket right now. I'll use a lug nut brush. Tip of the bristles is with the cleaning surface, not like this, like this right here. So we'll come and we'll grab all the lug nuts, push it in, turn it around. I have to go through all of these little nooks and crannies here. This is our barrel brush. We're gonna try to get inside here. So it's gonna go in there. When you're pulling it back, I usually put my hand there. That'll help so it doesn't splash up onto me. Again, start at the bottom, counterclockwise. Put it in. This is help keep the rim barrel clean. Well, washing the wheel barrels, that's the difference between having a great looking truck and a so-so looking truck. You keep your rim barrel clean. You do these little extra steps like here, have the right tools. That's why your truck's always gonna look better than your buddies. There's carpet in here, so if this was metal, we'd use this, but I'm just gonna hit this quick in here and just knock this down. I'll flush this out with a pressure washer. That's how we'll really get that clean. Now we can go on to, this is our tire brush. Again, start at the bottom. Take a little extra time with these aggressive treads here. I'm gonna go over the tire one more time with the tire cleaner. What I wanna see, I wanna see that white lathery foam. So if it looks like it's a uh, creamed coffee, it means you gotta keep scrubbing. So we should be good at this point here. Now we can rinse everything off. At this point I'll rinse the fender well down with the carpet. All right, let's move on to the front tire. So we're gonna repeat the process here. We'll use our wheel and tire cleaner, taking care to spray into all these little nooks and crannies here. So for this, you know, it's gonna vary from wheel design to wheel design. So I'm gonna have to go around this one maybe three times. And we'll squirt some wheel, wheel cleaner back into the barrel. So I'll shoot inside. I'll put the nozzle inside and spray into the barrel. Okay, we'll let that sit for a couple minutes. Tire cleaner. So obviously we can see some dirt up around the outside tread here. So let's spray that, make sure we spray that. And we'll let that soak in there. Boar's hair brush. Lug nuts. Again, so. So this wheel design is a little more challenging with all the surfaces going inboard to the vehicle, but that's why this lug nut brush here will be really nice to get inside here and get all those areas clean. So we'll go inside with the barrels.
going to just knock this down with the fender well. I'm just looking to knock the big heavy stuff off of it. The carpets in here, these trucks are, I mean, they're essentially luxury vehicles now at this point. The $100,000 trucks, they, you know, they want to keep it nice and quiet inside the cabin for these guys. Let's scrub the wheel tire. cleaner. That's nice and clean. All right, so let's do a quick recap. We've already gone through, we've already washed the wheels and the tires properly. We've pulled all the tools out. We've got those looking nice and clean. Now we're gonna start washing the body down. So a couple things. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use Gion tar along the rocker panels. You can see there's already some smuts kicked up. So, so tar, road tar. Springtime when the asphalt trucks come out, the road construction season. These great big tires are gonna grab the road, the grease off the road, and it's gonna kick it all up down the side. So we're gonna spray this on first. Uh, the reason we wanna spray this on, we want to safely remove the road tar. Common mistake I see a lot of home, home gamers, amateur people that don't have the right knowledge uh, is they'll get on there and they'll try to scrub the hell out of tar. The worst, absolute worst thing we ever see, they'll go into the kitchen and they'll get the, the green and yellow Scotch-Brite scrubbing pad and they'll take the green scrubber and they'll try to scrub off the road tar. All that's gonna do is just damage and ruin the paint. And then along the front of the vehicle, we're gonna use Gion Bug and Grime. You don't have to go out within 20 minutes and wash the bugs off, but don't let the bugs sit on the vehicle all summer and bake in the sun. Unless you have a PPF on the front, that's gonna etch the paint. So let's get the bugs off. So the reason I like the Gion Tar, you gotta be careful with the, the less expensive, the cheaper products out there. I know the Gion Tar is gonna be safe on this plastic here. That's why we use this in the shop here. These aren't our vehicles. We gotta treat them like, like they're very precious because they are. As that's sitting up now, we can talk about the foam. So we're gonna foam the vehicle down first. It says essentially a pre-soak, so we wanna let the soap, break up all the dirt. A truck like this, it's been off road, it's been down this, down this road, it's been construction, in the trades, you wanna keep it clean, but you wanna let the pre-soak, the foam, break up all those dirts, and then we're gonna wash it off with a pressure washer before we start touching and potentially swirling it up. The easiest, most fun way is with a foam cannon. For the foam cannon to work, you most likely need a pressure washer. There are some foam cannons you can buy that attach to a garden hose. If you don't have the foam can and the $2,000 pressure washer, that's okay. You can mix it up in a spray bottle. This is standard spray bottle, three, four, five dollars at a big box store. Or you can apply, this is a pump sprayer. Brute force and ignorance will solve this problem here. There we go. Let that soak in there. Uh, the least effective or least, least fun method is spraying it by hand. And this is just gonna take time. Hands are probably gonna be a little sore, but you're gonna get it on there. So I just switched it over. One thing, whenever time I switch over to the foam cannon, a little pro tip, I like to test it. Firing away from this truck. If this were to come off because this connection's loose, it's gonna fly off and it's gonna hit the wall. That, that's okay, we can replace the drywall. If it flies off and it hits this truck, uh, I don't want to damage a truck in here, it's not my truck. Client doesn't want me to damage a truck. If you're at home, you don't want to damage your truck either. So let's go ahead and foam this down. Adjust the nozzle. There's no magic way to apply the foam. You just have to get the foam on the vehicle. Pretend you're painting, painting something.
You ready for the grill, Matt? So at this point, <laughs> this is the fun part. I don't know what it is, but the, the foam just drives people crazy. They get all excited about it. So at this point, what I'm gonna do for my client is I'm gonna stand back here, take a couple pictures, and that's Instagram. So we can actually hear it dripping off the truck now. Uh, at this point, we're, we're inside. Don't do this in the full sun. Wait till you're in the shade. But as we start to see the foam break up, it's dissolving all the dirt on there. Now's the time we can jump in and we can use the pressure from the pressure washer to wash the truck off. There's still some foam suds on the truck. I'm okay with that. We're gonna, we're still, we're not done washing it yet. We're gonna get those off in a, in a couple minutes here. But here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna apply Jan iron to the truck now. So this is something, you don't need to do this every wash. You're, you're gonna do this one, two times a year based upon where your truck lives. So if your truck lives outside, if you live at an industrial plant, if you live next to the railroad, uh, it's around the construction sites a lot. So the iron is, iron comes off the road from the trains, the steel wheels from the trains. When the brakes, when you apply the brakes, if the drums and the brake rollers are made from iron, from ferrous, uh, carbon steel, that's gonna get kicked up. Those particles are gonna land on the paint. They're gonna lay in the paint and they're gonna embed into the paint. So the, the easiest way to get rid of them is to use GN iron, it's gonna dissolve those iron particles. So we're gonna just apply this to the vehicle. Obviously don't do this in full sun. We're gonna spray this on and we're gonna let it set up four to five minutes. Uh, it's gonna be difficult to see here on a blue vehicle, on a white vehicle. Every vehicle, the, the, the chemical reaction goes purple. So when you see that, you know it's working and you wanna spray it on until you stop seeing purple happen. So you might spray it on once or twice, spray it on, rinse it off after four to five minutes. We're gonna be pretty good here on a vehicle like this. So the old school way to get rid of iron used to be the clay bar method. So there's nothing wrong with the clay bar. Clay bar is uh, appropriate in certain circumstances, but if we can use something where we don't have to use, use a lot of force or take the risk of introducing marring or surface scratching to the truck, that's what we wanna do. So that's why we're using Gion iron right now. The Gion iron sat on the truck for four to five minutes now. We're just gonna rinse this off and then we'll start the two bucket method wash. Okay, so now we're gonna get to the point where traditionally people will think about washing the truck. So you can see we've done a lot of prep work before we ever gonna wash the truck. It's all that prep work means that we're really set up now to not swirl and scratch the factory finish on this truck's paint. So the truck looked great coming out of the factory. 95% of the paint damage is gonna happen during a poor car wash. So that's why you don't let the dealership wash your car. That's why you don't let the dealership wash your truck. That's why when you take your truck into service, tell them, do not wash my truck. So two bucket method, what's two bucket method? Well, I guess as you can see, we're using two buckets. So the red bucket here, red means stop. It just has clean water in it. Clean water, a grid guard with a washboard. And I have two big microfiber, nice soft wash mitts. So we take into the clean water, wash them out, wring them out, 
put them into the soap. So green means go. Have Gian bathe in here today. That's what we're using. So two big wash mitts. Bring them out. So, and then we're gonna use a cuff wash mitt. This cuff wash mitt, we're gonna use at the very end, we're gonna do all the doors, the door jams and the rocker panels. We're gonna do that area at the very end because that's where you're gonna have sand, grit, grime, all that stuff that if it gets in the wash mitt, gets on the rest of the vehicle, could scratch the vehicle. So we wanna minimize that. So we're just gonna work our way around the truck. into the wash mitt, wring it out so I don't. You notice I'm going front to back. I do that once and I flip over. I'm gonna come up and down. I wanna do straight lines. Front to back, up, down. Uh, none of these big circles. You don't want to do the circles, right? The first circles, if you, that's how you put the, put the swirls in. Now, yes, you technically you could mar it up, but if you go in a linear motion, your eye will be less susceptible to pick those up. So into the, into the red bucket, I have one more green one. Clean wash mitt, we'll jump up top here. For safety, I'm not gonna open the door and try to stand in here and run the risk of getting this guy's interior all wet. I'm not tall enough to reach the top of there. If I was that tall, I wouldn't be washing cars. Ugh. Anyways, let's come up top here. Front to back. Flipper, then side to side. So we've got all the whole body done. Rinse off the one side. I'm using the cuff washman now, so I'm gonna go around and get all the lower sections. We're, we're almost, we're almost home. We're almost finished up here. So once a month or so, I like to apply wet coat to these vehicles, whether we have a ceramic coating or not. Truck's still wet. We're gonna spray wet coat on and we're gonna rinse it off. There's a couple important details here that we need to go over. So we're gonna spray the roof, we're gonna rinse off the roof and then we're gonna rinse everything off the vehicle again. Then we do the hood and we're gonna rinse that, the horizontal panels. Uh, the reason we're gonna rinse it off like that is because this product will streak if you use it the wrong way. If you use it the right way, it's awesome. If you try to spray the whole vehicle down and rinse it off, you're gonna wind up with streaks over the vehicle. So let's just follow this, these steps precisely here. So this is gonna help increase the hydrophobic properties. What does that mean? Hydrophobic, it's a big fancy word for water beads. It's also gonna help keep it cleaner, a little bit longer. Spray that on, let's spray the hood now. Go to the other side, rinse that off. Okay, so now we can go panel to panel. Spray the bedside, you can hit the rims even. We're gonna rinse this panel off. Go. 
Trick is you gotta keep moving. Fender, the wheel. I see some of that white there, so I want to flush that white off the hood. There we go. It's nice and clean now. Clear, rinse water. ready to dry the truck down. What I have here is a couple of luxurious microfiber towels. The, the trick about microfiber towels is wash them on cold water at home and dry them on low heat. Uh, you can let them air dry, that's fine. Uh, we wash every towel after every use in the shop here. Really nice towel. Uh, it's got two sides. It's got a side with a bunch of fingers or technically nap sticking up and it's got a smooth side. So the side with all the fingers or the naps sticking up, that's what we're gonna put onto the truck. When we're drying the vehicle, we're, we're not gonna be rubbing this truck. If we're using force, we're doing something wrong. So we're simply gonna throw, and this is what's nice for these big vehicles, we're just gonna throw this on there and drag it across. I'm gonna have to put my fingers in here and drive down this valley, but that's okay. And it's just gonna start drying it off. Uh, a big truck like this, you're definitely gonna need two. You're gonna need two of these towels, if not three. I like to have two of everything. Here's the other pro tip. If you ever drop anything onto the floor, stop, pick it up, set the wash mitt, set the towel to the side, don't use it. So I know it's a super simple tip, but that's gonna save you from scratching up your truck. <laughs> Top down, whatever we hit with the wash mitt, we're gonna dry with the blue towel. I'm not gonna do the wheels, I'm not gonna open the door jams at this point. Just the paint. Linear emotions, front to back, up and down. I'm, I'm barely holding this on here. We're gonna use a set of black towels for the rocker panels, the wheels, and the door jams. Uh, the reason we use black is because black looks cool. <laughs> and then the other reason we do is, uh, as we wipe the wheels and the tires, they're gonna make, you know, it's gonna get, if it gets a little dirty in that, as we wash it out, those stains, uh, the towels always look fresh. Here's something I like to look for when we're doing these doors. There's actually a weep hole. Weep hole, it's not really a vent, but it's a weep hole because there's water, water can get inside of these doors here. If this gets clogged up, all that water will start building up and building up, and that's where you can see a, the door rust down the bottom. So just take note where those are. Every time you're washing the vehicle down, make sure they're cleaned out. So that one's nice and clean. That's another reason I like to wipe the inside of these down. And just keep them clean. We're here in the Northeast. We're here in the Northeast. The road salt, get the road salt off there. That's gonna, that's gonna help the longevity of your truck so it's not rusting along the bottom of the doors. The other part of the reason I like doing this here too is the fact that, uh, yeah, look, you open up a truck and these door jams are nice and clean, you know the guy's taking care of his truck. So at this point, there's still water dripping down, um, don't resist the urge. Don't take the black towel and wipe this down. We're gonna, we're gonna come back, we'll get the blue towel, the purple towel, we'll get the body towel and we'll dry all that off one more time. But just, it's okay, let that go right now. And let's keep going on with the rims. So that's it, the truck's completely clean. I mean, obviously the next step would be we can jump inside, 
We got the interior kit, wipe the interior down, get that all clean. That's, look, you want to keep your wife happy at home, you want to keep the partner happy at home, get the interior kit, clean out the interior, have a great weekend. That's the way to do it. If you got any questions, uh, comments, concerns, drop us a line. Uh, there's Bill with Immaculate Paint Protection. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.